So the changes for microaggressions needs to go from the top all the way to the bottom. Something that I really focus on is the power of one. Uh, we are privileged in many aspects. I privilege, I work in a high respectable institution related to a very high uh, impact medical school. So I'm privileged and I can use that to help people that are facing microaggressions. Um, and that's what we talk about upstander. You can help stop a microaggression that may not be directed towards you, but you require tools. The first time you stop a microaggression is quite difficult. You feel stress, your heart rate goes up, and you're like, and I'm doing this right. Because the other person, the aggressor, often is not aware of the microaggression. And sometimes they can be defensive. So we are providing tools at the individual level of how to stop a microaggression that comes towards you or is affecting somebody in your team. As we move up the step, my managers need to be aware that when somebody comes to them to discuss a microaggression is because it really affected that person. It takes a lot of bravery, especially for trainees or nurses to come to a big uh, manager to say, this is what's happening. So for the manager or supervisors, listening is the number one thing that we recommend. And as we go up, institutions and organizations should be made accountable for allowing macrogressions to happen or for keeping people that constantly are aggressors to marginalized groups. So it's a stepwise process. In addition, everybody needs to be involved. And one question they ask me is, but if they ask you where you're from, is that a big deal? Well, I always use the analogy of the mosquito, right? If you're out and you get bitten by a mosquito, you can live with that. You're like, it's okay. But some people like me, and a Latina, very young, so as a woman, Hispanic, and less than my 40s, I face many microaggressions a day. Are you old enough to be here? Uh, I get often confused for other jobs that are not mine. Those other jobs are very important, but they're not my role. And as a woman, the list of gender bias is very long. So for some groups, these microaggressions happen over and over again. Um, so like a hundred mosquito bites, how will you do if you get a hundred mosquito bites every day? It becomes very challenging. And to circle back, microaggression associated with depression, irritability, sleep disturbance, burnout, and people exiting academia. So the repercussions of these little insults are long, and many of us remember microaggressions that we faced 10 years ago.